Greetings to all the listeners, viewers, separated in time and space, which is, in fact, the essence of digital technology is the overcoming of the barriers of time and space. So I think it's very appropriate that we are doing this uh, launch of the Sri Lankan uh, Smart Energy Council in this manner, and I congratulate uh, those who are behind this effort. I think Sri Lanka needs more uh, independent uh, think tanks uh, that deal with issues of common importance that are non-partisan. So let me begin by talking about what I understand from the I was the, the topic that I was given, uh, digitalization. So digitalization is not simply the conversion of processes to digital form. It is the changing of business models uh, using digital technology and the opening up of new uh, value creation opportunities. So I'll be coming back to that, to that concept of sort of new models of doing things. Uh, given that I was also asked to um, focus on uh, disasters or crises, uh, not necessarily limited to the COVID or pandemic problem that we are facing right now. Uh, I've been working on uh, disaster resilience for many years, um, most recently with the UN um, uh, SCAP, uh, Economic and Social Commission for Southeast Asia, for the Asia Pacific, based in Bangkok, uh, and uh, for some to some extent in Sri Lanka as well. So I'll be drawing from that. Now, when I was thinking about this problem um, of this presentation, my mind went back uh, twenty or more than twenty years ago, uh, when I was uh, teaching at Ohio State in the middle of the United States. And I was also associated, affiliated with uh, something called the National Regulatory Research Institute. This was a uh, organization that conducted research for the 51, yeah, 51, 52 actually, 52 um, state regulatory uh, bodies, state public utility regulators why I said 52 is that every state has got one and then uh, Puerto Rico and uh, the, the District of Columbia also has, has a regulatory body, which are multi-sector regulators. They uh, don't only look at electricity, but in some cases they also regulate water. In almost all cases, they regulate uh, telecom. In some cases, they regulate transport and so on. So these people would come uh, for meetings. Uh, we would produce research for them and we would also provide some customized specialized training uh, for them. Uh, we also had a major uh, energy utility headquartered in uh, our city of Columbus, uh, American Electric Power. And they kind of understood that, you know, it's good to impress the people who communicate with the regulators and it's good to impress regulators. So they had developed a, a smart house where they were going to show uh, all the wondrous things that you could do with new technology and new technology in the 90s and even today means application of uh, you know, uh, computing uh, in various forms to problems. So I'm not going completely in that direction because I think that's a little bit too far out uh, but I, I can't deny that I've been kind of inspired by some of, uh, some of uh, that kind of blue sky futuristic thinking. Uh, so on one side, we are looking at disaster resilience. On the other side, we are looking at how, what kind of benefits in terms of business model improvements we can get through uh, digitalization. Uh, because it uh, it's not the totality of the energy sector, and uh, I think the smart uh, the smart energy council will have to uh, address that problem. Um, but uh, electricity, of course, touches 
almost all our people. And in some cases, it constrains businesses that seek to create exports and jobs. So I think it's reasonable to focus on, on electricity. Now, how can we, um, how can we uh, change the business model and open up value creation opportunities. I'm not going to cover the whole waterfront. I'm just going to talk about on the, on the generation or the su supply of electricity uh, from a disaster resilience perspective. And then I'm going to talk about what we can do at the, the consumer end. Now, I do realize the cost implications and I think it was extraordinarily uh, useful thing that Tilak did by giving us a really good sense of what the cost implications are. But particularly when you want to talk about uh, resilience, you have to talk about diversity of sources. Because the more diverse it is, of course, you can have extremely diverse set of energy sources, and then you can have one choke, po choke point or two somewhere in Kerala Viti or something, and the whole system will crash. I, that's not what I mean, but I'm saying, Throughout the process, you need to look at these choke points or points of vulnerability and remove them or, or take precautions against their failure, right? So uh, without question, we need more renewables. That's the way the world is going. 